Hello there and welcome to Blackjackal Gaming. GW has announced that the Screamer Killer is returning at Warhammer Fest and he's bigger and angrier than ever. The new design pays homage to the old design, it's taking real inspirations to the original 2nd edition model and it comes both with melee and range capabilities. He has an interesting ability tied in, an impressive leadership value and he's absolutely massive. He towers over the new Redemptor model. So let's take a look at his profile. He comes in at movement 8 inches and he's relatively tough being toughness 9 with a 2 plus save and 10 wounds. This will make him relatively difficult to move from the battlefield with small arms fire and medium arms fire. However, we've seen with the new Laz cannon being strength 12 that it might make short work with him. So you've definitely got to make sure that he's not left out in the open with some of the anti-tank weapons available. He comes with an impressive objective control of 3 meaning that he can really ram his face into the objectives, kill a load of people there and take control of it. And he comes with a massive leadership of 8+, plus, so it's going to be very hard to make this guy fail his Battleshock tests. And coupled with that, that he may get a little boost being Tyranid with their faction ability, which we haven't been told yet. But if you take a quick look, you'll see that he does have the factious Synapse. So I imagine he might get a little boost on top of this as well. So don't be expecting him to fail a Battleshock test anytime soon. On to his weapons profile and he comes with both uh, melee and ranged attack. So we'll look at his ranged attack to begin with and this is the Bioplasmic Scream. This is an assault weapon with a blast keyword. It's 18 inches, ballistic skill 4 plus. Now it's got an attack value of D6 plus 3 but being blast it will get additional attacks based on how many models are in the unit. It's strength 8, minus 2 AP and 1 damage. So realistically, this is geared towards taking on Space Marines. Wounding on two with a minus two is going to make it difficult for them to stop wounds going through. But that damage one is quite balancing because in 10th edition, it looks like they're trying to trade down with balance a little bit just to make sure that things aren't capable of basically taking on multiple different target types. Everything has its key, key unit that it's aiming for, and this seems to be Space Marines. Now where this guy really kicks off is when he's in melee. So this guy comes in with 10 attacks at weapon skill 3 plus, so an improvement on his ballistic skill. They're at strength 10, minus 2 AP and damage 3. So if you get this guy in contact with a lot of the vehicles in the game, not the heavier ones such as the Repulsor, but the lighter versions such as a Rhino, this guy is going to do a lot of damage. So he's got a couple of abilities locked into his profile. The first one is a death scream. Now what this does, it allows you to select one unit that's been hit by his bioplasmic screen during this turn, and you can select it to take a battle shock test. Now this battle shock test will have a minus one to the value. What this means is that, for example, the new space marine units, they'll have to roll 2d6 and try not to score above five to fail their battle shock tests. This can be very useful when targeting those slightly harder to move units rather than a guardsman to try and really minimize the damage output and take away their objective control. His other ability is Deadly Demise. Now we know that this is the amount of mortal wounds that are given out when uh, a monster or a vehicle explodes. So when this explodes, it'd be one mortal wound for every unit within six inches. So all in all, this guy looks pretty good. He's got a decent range ability, with it being Assault and Blast, it's going to really allow him to charge in there and do maximum damage on the way in. But where this guy really glows up is in melee. He's going to do a lot of damage to medium and heavy, heavy infantry, and those medium light tanks he's going to make short work of. His Battle Shock test ability, that's going to come real clutch in certain situations, where you can just charge in kill a load of models, and if they're still there and they've got a high, higher objective control value, well you select them for your battle shock test, and if they fail that with a minus one, then you gain control of that objective. This can be very good. There's going to be a lot, a lot of strategic play with this ability. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any comments, then pop them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button as it greatly helps the channel. Hit the subscribe button to see any future Warhammer content. Take it easy and see you next time for more grim darkness from the 41st millennium.